Rebels with a Purpose, and I'm your talk show host, Terrence Perry. Glad you all are tuning in this, this afternoon and joining us. Uh, also today, I have an interesting guest uh, that I want you all to call in and ask any questions that, that you feel necessary, um, and I want you to call in on 919-518-9773. I guess this evening is Frank Jordan, and he's the author of the new book entitled 500 Years of American Deception. Uh, I'm going to bring him on a little bit later, but before I do, I want to also mention uh, we own NissanCommunications.com. You can also go to Nissan Communications channel, and we're live. You can go to, when you, once you hit channel, you'll see Rebels with a Purpose. I'm not how you doing this evening. I'm fine, Terrence. You? I'm great. Did you get any comments on last last week's show? I I did. I got quite a few comments on, on last week's show. I actually got some uh, calls later, and uh, actually I talked later with some of the guests, and you know that that went well. Good. Yeah. So uh, one got, of the things I got nice nice comments you about got some, it. You got some good ones. Yes. That's, yeah, we we um and we we did get some great comments throughout actually all week. Yeah, good, I've good. I've gotten comments. So w one of the things that I want to do t today is kind of uh, before we get started into the show, I do want to uh, uh, as last week I sent my condolences out to the Muhammad Ali family. Uh, this week, of course, there was a shooting over the weekend. Are you familiar with the uh, yeah, isn't that a shame? In Orlando? That's is that a shame? Every week you have something uh, like this too. Huh. Every, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to start off every week with my condolences to the loss of uh, a family or a community. Uh, but this is what's happening in America today, and you know these are some of the the issues that we'll be talking about on the show, Rebels with a Purpose. Uh, and as we, as I spoke last week, uh, I was speaking about Muhammad Ali and uh, not just about his his passing. But his fight during the 60s and 70s and what he stood for is actually personifies what Rebels with a Purpose is all about. Um, because Muhammad Ali's story uh, is, is basically, it's my story, but it's also America's story. So in saying that, it was um, his stand that he took, even though he was the, the heavyweight champion of the world, he chose to step down from the heavy the, the heavyweight title, just based on his belief and what he believed in. He felt strongly enough about it. He didn't, as, as I said last week, he didn't want to go and fight in a Vietnam War, in a war that, um, you know, he said he didn't have no beef with those people. They want his oppressor. Why was he gonna go thousands of miles to a, and, and and fight a people that wasn't fighting against him? He said if, if he was gonna fight, it would his, his oppressor was right here in America. So. That's where his fight would have been. He said, so, you know, lock me up if you want to. And he stood he stood on that premise. So today, again, I want to, um, we're going to talk about Frank Jordan's book, 500 Years of American Deception. And I, and I want to welcome Frank to the show. Um, and we're going to get started with some questions for him. But before I do, again... Uh, if, I want you to call in on 919-518-9773 with your questions, with your concerns. Whatever, if you think you're a rebel with a purpose, uh, call into the show. We want to talk to you. Frank, how you doing today? I'm all right, Brother T. How you feeling? I'm great, man. I'm glad to have you on the show. I've been looking forward to, to um, just having this dialogue with you. Absolutely. Um, I met you, I'm going to say, at least seven years ago, uh, and I never knew you was an author. So... <laughs> Finding out that you was an author was, uh, and as I became an author myself, and that kind of so we kind of ran into one another again, right? And uh, and actually, some of the stuff we were writing about was along the same line. But let me ask you, man, can you just share with the uh, with the public um, what five hundred years of American deception is about? But before you do, tell us a little bit about you and who Frank Jordan is. Oh, absolutely. Um, I would say maybe twenty five to thirty years ago. Um, probably the age of maybe 19, uh, goes even further back than that. I started uh, my course of world history. Um, and, you know, um, you know, uh, being that it may, uh, world history 
um, it, it goes deeper than a lot of people think it is. You know, um, like I, I actually came to find out that um, one of the biggest overlooked uh, black world history books is, is the Bible. And um, it's not um, read or is not understood like a lot of people may think it is. Um, in the deeper that I've actually went and studied and traveled, um, the more lies I found out, mm. you know, as far as like uh, people were perpetrating. Um, and that's what I wrote about uh, in this particular book right here. I, I've been lecturing for almost 30 years. And uh, one of the main things is, is that we have to get re-educated. Um, some of the falsehoods and, you know, the, the, the um, lies that has been told for more than 500 years. 500 years is just, you know, the amount of time that we've been over here in America, but it spans further back than that, like I stated in my book. So, Fred, let me uh, just kind of feed off of that a little bit from, from your book, 500 Years of um, American uh, Deception, and I want to hold the book up, uh, 500 Years of American Deception, but I, but I want to also kind of go into, I want you to kind of go into detail a little bit about the, um, the first chapter and just in some of the other chapters in the book, what made you want to write about these particular uh, subject matters when it comes to the deception. When you're talking about the deception in America, um, you're talking about the plight with the, the black man, the white man, and, right. and, and just America's deception in general. Right. But give me some specifics. Uh, if you may, on on some of the uh, deception and lies that have been told that people just may not be aware of. And some may, but, you know, mm-hmm. let's go there. And, again, if you have any questions I want to call in, if you got any questions for Frank, myself, feel free to call at 919-518-9773. We want to hear from you today, so do give us a shout. Um, Well, it depends on how much time you have. It's just so... I so much, but uh, <laughs> it depends on how much time you got, because there's a lot of lies being spewed out here. Um, but one of the things that I um, uh, that we stress uh, most of all is that uh, uh, Christ, who the world calls Christ, his name in Hebrew is Yahweh, meaning he is the Savior. According to the Bible, according to history, according to facts, archaeological facts, um, he was a so-called black man, according to the Bible. Um, I have thousands of pictures I put about maybe... Uh, 20 pictures uh, in my book proving that, you know, from uh, Rome all the way to Russia, you know, proving that he was a so-called black man in paintings and the pictures over in the churches uh, that are still over there. And these pictures, uh, Terrence, haven't been painted just yesterday, um, you know, by the local author. These pictures have been over there for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, Number two, uh, one of the main things is that the the so-called black man and woman over here in America, the people that was brought over here as slaves over here in America are the people of Christ, and they are the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. Um, the Vatican City knows it. The world leaders knows it. The popes know it. The pope, the presidents of the United States, they know it. This is a worldwide kept secret, okay, that the black cells brought over here to America are not Africans. They're actually the people of Christ and the people of Solomon, according to history and according to the Bible. Uh, man, that's. Let me ask you this now: How, I mean, how has America been able to, con, you know, uh, deceive American, you know, uh, the American people like that for so long, for so many years? I mean, how have they kept that deception going, and how was it revealed to you uh, in terms of how did you find out about it, and how can the public find out about that now? Because the stuff that you're saying. It have to be. I mean, we should be able to research it and find it, just like you found it, and you know, because it got to be like the it is. It, it have to be uh, be proved. Right. You're talking facts. Absolutely. So if you're talking facts, how have we been deceived for so long, and how can we get that information today? Right. Um, I have an email. Um, all small caps Z. A-A-Q-A-N-1212 at yahoo.com, and I'll be glad to answer any one question after the program is over with. But one of the main things that um, they have used on our people is, number one, surprisingly, is Christianity. Um, when, you read, when you read the Bible and when people have their own opinions, it's two different things. The Bible says one thing, people say another. Um, 
when you read back in the past about how uh, King David was, the likes of King David was, and how King Solomon was, you'll know that these guys were very vicious people as far as like their demeanor and their love towards the Most High. Um, but in today's society, you know, you have black people wanting to call themselves a Muslim. You got people over here calling themselves a Baptist. You got people over here calling themselves Jehovah Witness. You got a church down the street calling themselves the Seven Day of Venice. But that's all divide and conquer. I mean, I'm not going to sit in the social intelligence, you know, so that's all divide and conquer. And that's how uh, the Puritans came over here and divided us up as a people. You know, you can't come together as a people when you have so many different divisions out here. And um, it worked. Actually, it worked. You know, some of the so-called holidays they have out here, like uh, Fourth of July, Mother's Day, Father's Day. These are some of the things that divided us up. You can't go into the Bible and find where the Heavenly Father wrote and said celebrate Fourth of July or celebrate Mother's Day. Okay, you just can't do it. But there are laws, stats, and commandments that are in the Bible, okay, that the Heavenly Father does tell us to follow. Okay. Do we have a question? Yeah, we have a question. Um, Shirley right. in the chat is saying, since the Bible is the first black world history book, should the Bible be taught in our schools? How can this be with the separation of church and state? And then she has another question, but first I'll let you. Ah, that's a good question. Matter of fact, they made one of the biggest mistakes in taking the Bible out of the classes. That's one of the biggest mistakes. Immorality has gone down a thousand percent here in America, okay, uh, with as far as uh, the lifestyles that a lot of people lead, as far as like the indoctrination of, of what America want us to believe, as far as uh, the illegal substances that are spewed. Look what happened um, the first weekend in, uh, in June, if I may uh, add this. Um, there were 69 shootings in Chicago wow. over the weekend, and four people got killed. Uh, just two, just yesterday, you had 43 shootings in Chicago. Seven people got killed. This is the type of stuff that goes on year-round, round, all year round, but it never gets any attention. But as soon as something happens uh, in Orlando, as far as, like, the advertisement and as far as, like, you know, something that's going to hit America in their pockets as far as, like, tourism. All of a sudden now the National Guard has to get called out. Now all of a sudden now, um, you know, the National Guard has to get called out, and it gets in the genres all the attention. Blacks and Puerto Ricans have been killing each other, and people have been killing us for years and for centuries. Do we have a call? Yes, um, this is Shirley. Can you hear me? Yeah, Shirley, I hear you. How you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. Um, I am really, really excited with this author. Um, this is this is Thank really, you. really interesting conversation. Um, I just want to make a comment. I'm not going to stay on long. But, Thank you, Shirley. Um, I, you're you're quite welcome. It's so refreshing to see um, someone of your you know your talents bringing this to us. Um, I think some of some of the reasons why, and I want you to address this, I think some of the reasons why our children are lost today is simply because they've been denied their true history. Right. They don't have the pride. That, I mean, while some of the history that we have is dark, is scary, is hurtful, and all of that, but we have greatness in our history. Absolutely. And it needs to be taught. So... You know, I, I would like for you to talk about that a little bit at some point in this discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I know uh, time is of the essence here a little bit, but I'm going to try to squeeze in as much as I can. Um, what she said is, is she, she's absolutely correct. Um, uh, I, I have over I, I have over 500 history books um, in my library, personally in my house. Um, I have six books that William Shakespeare is a man of color. I put two of them inside my book. Okay, wow. um, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, these are all black men. Um, and this is something that I'm not making up. Okay, and uh, one of the things that you just mentioned, Shirley, which you're, you're, you're right on the nose about, our people have no self-esteem. Okay, and I'm, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. You know, uh, when our kids go to school and learn about American history, they become disenchanted because it's not about them. That's why our kids fail so much, okay, because the history is not about them. You got black kids going to school and they're learning about George Washington chopped down a, a cherry tree. Okay, it has nothing to do with our history whatsoever. Okay, George Washington got wooden teeth. Okay, what the hell does that got to do with you know little 
Afri so-called African-American kids and black, it has absolutely nothing to do with it. That's the reason why our kids get so disenchanted and they come home with Fs and Ds because the history isn't talking about them. But when you go back and research and you really thoroughly do research, you find out, yes, King Solomon is black. Shakespeare, yes, is a black man. Yes, Aristotle, the Knights, rounded to Robin Hood is a black man, okay? You find out all these things. Beethoven, black men. Okay, and contrary to belief, guess what, Shirley? They weren't Africans. They were Hebrew Israelites, okay? The descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is one of the world best-kept secrets, okay, that the Vatican City knows about this, okay? You have the popes, and you have people that get sworn in on masonries. They know that the people that was brought over here to America as slaves, they know that they are the same children of Israel that served up under the Pharaoh, up under the hands of Egypt, and built the pyramids for Egypt. The same Israelites that was then during the time of Pharaoh and the Egyptian Empire that built up the Egyptian Empire is, are the same people that were sold over here to America as slaves. You can read about that in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in the 68th verse. Do we have another caller? Shirley, you still on? I am, and I, I want to say one other thing, because um, sure. I don't want to monopolize this, but I do want to say this, and it's kind of funny. Um, you spoke of George Washington and his wooden, wooden teeth. Well, there's a lie right there. George <laughs> Washington actually took te the teeth out of slaves' mouths. I was paraphrasing, and Shirley. Passionate. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But I just want to throw that out there because this is the kind of stuff. I understand. You, know, you talk about lies. This even knows a little lies. You're right. He, Look, he sure. took the teeth out of some of the slaves' mouths. If they had pretty teeth, you better not smile around, George, because you'd be in trouble. A absolutely, Shirley. And, and, and look, <laughs> and look, Shirley, absolutely correct. And and, and and let me say this, too. You know, is, you know, we don't have enough time in the year, okay, to go around and, 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 and really critique the lies that America has actually spread it. Here's another one. Look at Sir Isaac Newton. How are you going to sit up under a tree? You just finished drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels. You sat up under a tree, and all of a sudden, an apple falls on your head, and you discovered uh, gravity. Gravity was here before man, okay? Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Electricity is a force of nature from the Heavenly Father that he made. How do our people believe stuff like this? You know, Easter bunnies, you know, Easter bunnies, and bunny rabbits laying eggs, and Easter... Bunny rabbits don't lay eggs. They have babies. So, my thing is this, is that you know, America has played a very cruel joke, okay, on our people to the point where they don't know where they're coming and going, and our people vicariously live their lives through the way America has critiqued it to them, and they vicariously live their lives through a reality show. That's another distraction of our people right there. While America is bombing and stealing and taking oil and brainwashing people and stealing money and sending our soldiers, our brothers and sisters over to Iraq to get killed, okay, they're over here lying and deceiving Okay, over here in America, uh, 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 basically just uh, distraction and throwing distractions such as reality shows, drugs in our community. And a black man can't wake up and they can't see this to save their lives, man. I'm going to tell you, Brother T, there's something wrong here, man. So, Frank, let me ask you, um, just before we go, again, anybody that want to call into the show, anybody that feel like they're a rebel with a purpose or a cause, uh, call into the show at 919-518-9773. Uh, we have Frank Jordan on the show today, and he's talking about his, his new book, 500 Years of American Deception. And in that, Frank, let me ask you this. How can uh, they get this book? Uh, I think it's on Amazon. Yes. Um, could you uh, tell us how to get in touch w w with you, what right. your social media, how we can get in touch with you, and how they can get their hands on this book? Right, absolutely. Um, listen, um, uh, uh, my email address is uh, all small caps Z. A A Q A N one two one two. It's the numbers at uh, yahoo.com. And uh, my book is available. Actually, I, um, I have a third book that's coming out next week uh, called The Greatest Show on Earth. It's actually critiquing the way that um, the black people conduct themselves here in America as far as entertainment purposes um, and actually selling, them so selling their souls for a dollar. You can find my books on amazon.com or kindle.com. Um, and trust me, it'll be the best $19.99. Uh, you, you've ever spent. I'm not in it for the money. You know, I've gave out more books than I've sold. So I'm not in it for the money. What I, I'm in it for is to re-educate my people because is it important? Yes, it is important because we've been brainwashed for so long and so many years. It's time the truth came out. And our people, you're going to find out also 
that you can't ignore this for too long, okay? The truth is sitting us right in our face every day, every day, while we looking at love and hip-hop and while we're looking at the Atlanta housewives, okay, you got these prophecies in the Bible coming to pass every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. While a lot of people are partying, black men, black women want to turn up in clubs and, you know, <laughs> want to go down to Miami for a bike rally in Miami, they ain't going to be getting too much business. Do we got a call? Soon. Anyway, but um, long story, you know, but things are looking rapidly worse for America. Frank, let me take this call. I think it's for you, and feel free to ask. Okay, caller. Hi, uh, my name is Kira, and I actually have had the opportunity to read um, Frank's books, and he's an amazing person, but the question that I wanted you, to Kira. put out there um, is I'm a mother with, I guess now, two kids in college, and so they've gone to the next level of education, is how do we reach our young people? Because if I had to do it over again, I probably would homeschool my kids based on the public school system and I guess the shortcomings of exactly what you said earlier is they're teaching things that really won't help educate them to be independent free thinkers or almost to control um, the direction that they go so that uh, their education is designed to co control what they do in life. So I wanted my children to go to school to find an independent way to be self-employed versus to get a job and still hope that someone else employs them. So how do we reach children that it would make an impact on their lives long-term so we create leaders. Right. Um, uh, uh, good question, Kara. Um, it's always a pleasure to hear from you. Um, and, and thank you. I, I appreciate you. Um, one of the things we have to do as adults is that um, it, it, it is very simple, Kara. Uh, we must not lie to our kids. You know, um, that's one of the biggest things um, that I noticed that a lot of blacks and Latinos and West Indians do. We lie to our kids. OK, through the, you know, the ways that America has raised us up. Um, if you know something, uh, if you want to homeschool your kids, that's that's great. That is that, that is great. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I encourage homeschooling because, like I said earlier, you know, if your kids are going to go to school and they're going to learn about Sir Isaac Newton and they open the book, they see George Washington, they, they close the book. You know, they see Abraham Lincoln, you know, they, they go to assemblies, they see. Marilyn Monroe in schools they're not learning nothing about themselves uh in schools they're not learning nothing about themselves anyway you know so uh for you to re-educate your kids and just stress it the same way that uh America has pushed the lies and the deception on our kids and on us as adults you got to push the you got to push the truth on your kids as well too don't be ashamed okay if your kids either they're gonna love you or they're gonna hate you bottom line truth is the truth okay it stands by itself okay Either they're going to love you or they're going to hate you. But in the long run, they're going to thank you for telling them the truth. Okay. Frank, listen, I, I want I want you to share with, with the public how to get in touch w with you again on social media, where they can find your book, and just kind of just you know, give us that, that insight again so we can go on. Is it Amazon? Yes. yes sir. Uh, and what about Barnes & Noble? Yes, sir. Are you on Create Space? Yes, Any sir. Okay. So those venues, we can find Frank's book, 500 Years of American De Deception. I say we need this book. Uh, and again, 500 Years of American uh, Deception, it talks about all the deception that's been going on in America and how we need to wake up and can wake up. Absolutely. But again, the, the, the parents and the, the community have to be aware of of what the lies are in order, in order to give that information and knowledge to their kids. If they don't know, then certainly they can't impart that to, to their uh, children because they lack the knowledge. But what we're finding out now with, with, uh, with the Internet, Googling a lot of information, you can find these sources and you can find this information. Uh, it is out there. That information is out there. It can be found with a little research, a little thought, and... But we as a people need to, I think, fight the school systems to get uh, our knowledge and information in, in, into the school systems, fight the judicial system, uh, and any other system that's holding us back. Don't be afraid to fight the system uh, because Correct. otherwise, you, you know, you'll just keep operating in darkness. Right. And operating in darkness, you're gonna, it's going to continue to be the, the blind leading the blind. Those days should be in the past, but they're not. But listen, I want to say, Frank, thank you for coming to the show. Uh, and sharing your new book, Will, hey, and then you. you got a book that's coming out next week. Can you tell us the name of that book again? Yes, that book is called The Greatest Show on Earth. 
um, and, and, and the critiques, like I said, the entertainment side of our people, um, how it was in the past with minstrel shows all the way up to today to guys like Steve Harvey and Kevin Hart. They're the modern day minstrel shows <laughs> of, of today. Frank, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show, thank man. Thank you and, and, for having uh, me. And again, when your new book comes out, I want you to give me a shout, come back to the show again. Uh, okay. And let's talk about the new book. But right now, we do have 500 Years of American Deception. Uh, Frank, thank you for having me, uh, for coming hey, on the thank show. thank you, Brother Terrence. Thank you. All right. All right. Listen, we have uh, Tracy Butterfly Dustin to be coming on next, and she has a new book out called Divine Influence. And I definitely want to talk with... I want to talk with, with Tracy today about the book, Divine Influence. Uh, she's going to share that with you all uh, this evening. So uh, stay tuned. And anybody that want to call into the show, uh, that number is 919-518-9773. Uh, if you are a rebel with a purpose, a rebel with a cause, or a rebel on a mission, feel free to, uh, feel free to call into the show. We look forward to taking calls. And again, I'll be talking to Tracy Butterfly Dustin. Her new book is Divine Influence. Tracy, how you doing today? I'm wonderful, Terrence. And yourself? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having you on the show this evening. Uh, I want to jump right into this book, Divine in in Influence. I've read half of it. I hadn't read the whole book. It got a lot of impactful information in it. But listen, Tracy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about what inspired you to, to write the book? What inspired me to write the book was just to operate out of my creative flow. Writing poetry is just normal to me. It helps to express who I am, my thoughts. It brings up healing and a comfort. I just enjoy writing poetry. Okay. Listen, and the reason I ask because with some of the poetry that from me reading your book, there's a pattern in your book of talking about healing. Uh, and so you have over 100 poems in the book. Uh, but a lot of that is talking about healing. So how um, did you come to write about healing in such a poetic way? I mean, every, every page I read, it was enticing. Uh, but in the theme of the, the poems, I know that's a theme of healing in that, in men, in women, in, 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 in children, in individuals, when you're talking about self-esteem and self-worth, uh, there's a healing that you're talking about. How did you bring that point to all of your, your, your poems? Not every single one, but a lot of your poems do have that healing theme. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Sure, Terrence. Um, I just think that it flows naturally. I think that when we connect to our authentic selves, that we begin to flow out of the gifts that we have on the inside of us, and the thing to do is just to just let the gifts free. And when you operate out of a spirit of wisdom and you just pen the paper and you just keep writing as the creative flow, as the creative juices continue to flow. <laughs> okay. They want to come out. How long have you been writing? Uh, how long have you been writing poetry? I've been writing poetry for over maybe 10 years, off and on. Okay, and this is your first book? This is my first book, yes. So we're, is there another book in the works right now? Oh, yes. I've completed a 21-day devotional guide for women, and that book helps to build self-esteem, confidence as well. You know, I really like talking to women to help them understand that they are valuable. And a lot of women don't realize that you can be valuable, you can understand your worth just being your natural self. A lot of people think that they need a lot of add-ons, but, you know, you was gifted and created in the essence that you are, and that is enough. And, you know, just my goal to just express that wherever I go. Tracy, I, I mean, and I've met you over the past couple of years, and that's what I've known you to do. But, again, uh, anyone that want to call into the show, give us a call at 919-518-9773. We have Tracy Butterfly Dunstan in the house this evening, and we do want to, uh, she's ready to take any questions that the public may have. Uh, also, Tracy, can you tell us where they can... Uh, where we can find your book right now, or uh, is it on Amazon? Yes, it's available on Amazon.com. Also, you can contact me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you just look for Tracy with an I, Butterfly with an I, Tracy Butterfly Dunstan. So how did you come up with that Tracy Butterfly Dunstan? What's, 
Where's the butterfly uh, come in? Where's that come in at? How does that resonate with Tracy Dust? Oh, Terrence, it's just a process. <laughs> it's called life and discovering who you are on this journey and realizing that at one point I was in a cocoon and I thought I knew who I was, but as I began to blossom out of that, co- out of that cocoon and coming into my own right and understanding the powers that I possess as who I am and I, as who God created me to be, and once I realized I was free and I can fly and be what I wanted to be, oh. I'm a butterfly, and <laughs> that's how it is. All right. Tracy, let me ask you this. Now, there was one poem that I read in the, in the in your book about they must die. And when I first heard it, I was like, what's she saying? They must die. And when I read it, then I understood uh, the point you were talking about, the ego. And can you share a little bit about that poem? It kind of resonated with, uh, I thought it was strong. Well, certainly the ego and pride is our biggest enemy. You know, we live in a life in such an illusion where the world just continued to operate out of the ego. And the ego reminds me of Humpty Dumpty. Eventually, you know, the ego is big. It's sitting on a wall. It has king horses. It has king men. But eventually, that ego is going to fall off the wall and it's going to crack. And you're gonna, and there's not going to be anyone around to put the ego back together again. And if we're not careful and, and, and pay attention to who we are and look deep inside of us and, become, and remain humble, Pride and ego is just setting us up for a fall. You know, it's, it whispers to us. It speaks to us. It, it encourages us to just continue to swell and swell. And if we're not careful, we'll damage everything that we have, the people that are around us. And we don't even realize that we're living in a life of an illusion, which is the life of a lie. So the ego and pride must die. Because if you never allow ego and pride to die, you'll never operate in your authentic self. Your authentic being is so much more powerful. It's so much more loving. Uh, it's, it has so much wisdom. But ego and pride, you just be foolish. And, you know, you just be spinning your wheels in the mud. I hear you. Ego and, ego and pride. Uh, and that does say a lot to, I guess, mankind in general. Um, I think that's probably the downfall of, humanity that, that ego and pride and jealousy and you speaks of, of of these things in your book uh, but also you, you have a poem about kids and and in that poem you're not talking about the ego and the pride you've moved on to um the i guess the lightheartedness of of the kids the uh you know uh, i guess the uh, kids are uh innocence Oh, and yes. I think you speak of the innocence in children. Can you share a little bit of that 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 poem? Where did you uh, you pull that from? Well, turns all of them <laughs> come from within. And we when we think about kids in their holistic state, they're just brilliant. They're fascinating. They're loving. They're kind. They're so innocent. They're so easy to be entreated. You know, they just make our eyes sparkle. They're just magnificent kids. They are so brilliant. They're talented. You know, the list could go on and on about kids, and they just bring a sense of warmth to my heart. Okay, again, uh, you can call in on the show right now at 919-518-9773. We have Tracer Butterfly Dunstan in the house today, and she has her new book, Divine Influence. Again, she said a uh, book can be found on Amazon.com. Also, your book is on uh, Create Space. And is it uh, with Barnes and Nobles that as is, well? That is correct, Terrence. Okay. He holds it up. It's transparent. Divine influence. Tracy, what's your uh, what's your favorite poem in the book? If you have to pick one that resonates with you more than others uh, on a regular or a daily basis, which one would you uh, stands out to you? And I know you got many. I mean, you got over 100, so. <laughs> My favorite poem is called Integrity is His Brand. Can we, can we get some of that? <laughs> I can give you a little bit of that, Terrence. Thank you. Integrity is His Brand. I hear him calling unto me. The strength of his character is also possessing me. Courage and wisdom has been placed in his right hand. As he unfolds the plan in his left hand, integrity is what I perceive. Sweat dripping from his brow, Representing bravery and dedication as being man, she can trust in him as her protector and friend. Integrity is his brand. And that's just a small portion of it. But that is my favorite poem. Um, I think that integrity is so important. I think it's the most attractive 
peace that a man could ever possess, and that is to have integrity. So that's my favorite poem. And then I had another one that's called Come Forth, O Deep One, Come Forth, O Truth. Shout from the mountaintops of hope and prosperity. Let, the, let your voice be heard in all over the ranges, regions of this world. Come forth, the earth is calling unto you. And that is my second favorite because that's the, the message that I try to invade, convey wherever I go. You know, that we all have a gift. We all have purpose. So just come forth in that purpose. Come forth and let the earth know who you are. Leave your footprints here while you have the time. Just stop waiting on anyone. Know that you are powerful. Know that you are gifted. Know that you are talented. Know that the earth is really waiting on you. So come forth. That's my second favorite poem, Terrence. Uh, Tracy, Amnon has a question a, a, for a quick one yes does that mean that a woman does not have to have integrity only men oh i think everyone should <laughs> okay. have integrity all right everyone <laughs> so but that just resonated from the what the, the men. let me ask you this tracy is something like that there's a theme i know there's a theme of healing that i hear in your messages in your poem but also there's there's a uh, there's a biblical theme that i'm hearing also uh, that, mm -hmm. that, that that resonated with me when i was uh, reading your poems uh, that's not by accident that's a little bit of who who you are oh uh, yes oh yes um, we are I believe that we are all spiritual beings having a human experience I'm one with God I understand my purpose I understand where my creative flow comes from it comes from God um, he has gifted me he continues to show me who I am and I embrace it I don't run from it and I live a life of balance. I also know, too, Tracy, about you, that you're involved in a lot of activities in the community. I know one of, um, well, there's several that you are involved in that I'm aware of, but can you share a little bit about those, uh, those community involvement pieces that, that you're involved in from, I know, the, the divergent piece, and mm -hmm. well, just share uh, several of the ones that you're involved in right now? You're involved in a lot. Yes, the Divergent is called PWG, Divergent Group, which, meant, which means plant, water, grow. And Divergent means thinking outside the box. And we know that we live in a world that's, that is founded upon a lot of systems. Well, systems don't always work for all people. So Divergent means, you know, there's more than one way to an answer. You know, somebody may say two plus two is four. Somebody might say two times, you know, four, and you get the same answer. The main important thing is arriving to the answer, the best way that you can arrive to the answer. You don't have to do it like I do it. I don't have to do it like you do it. But we are here to live this life, to experience what God has given us. So let's have fun while we do it. Let's not be feel like that we are um, controlled in the process because life is all about being free, and that's the power that you know we have on the inside. A lot of times we often look outside for what it is that we desire. But most of all, we have to look inside of us because your true treasures lie on the inside of you. You know, we, we, want, to, we want to attain the American dream, you know. But really, in order to attain your dreams, you have to look inside of who you are to find out who you are, to discover what the, that dream is. And if you never take the time, if you never go on pause, you will, ne you will continue to just be like beating at the wind and you won't get anywhere. You may even ach achieve some things, but you still might not be satisfied in that achievement because you haven't tapped into your authentic self. So that's very important. And I had to discover that myself. You know, I didn't know this 10 years ago. I could say that I began to tap into my authentic self, uh, I guess, maybe five years ago. And I'm enjoying this journey of discovering who I am. Okay. Look, can you tell people how to, um, how to get to that divergent group? I, I know it's a local a group that meets a couple, of times, uh, a couple of times a month. Can you share a little bit more about how, um, how and when do it take place? Sure, the meeting takes place every other Wednesday night. It's located on 106 Justice Street in Lewisburg, North Carolina. You can always reach out to me on Facebook. We always have postings ab about the meeting time and the topic. And that group is really about empowering sessions. 
the group is designed to empower the community because if we if we allow ourselves to be empowered, then that's when the communities around us can change. The communities around us will not ever be able to change if we ourselves don't continue to evolve in a higher state of understanding, in a higher state of awareness, in a higher state of love, in a higher state of knowledge. So all those things are are important. So that's why we call it an empowerment session. And the and the public is welcome. We we welcome everyone to come. And I know you also y'all have a you have a poetry. Um, what's that? The group that you all have is it's a poetry group that meets monthly. Yes, we have a open night live poetry event that takes place every third Friday night in the same location, 106 Justice Street, Lewisburg, and that is for that is open to the community. It is free. Whatever your gift, whatever your talent is, please come free. Feel free to come and be a part of the Poetry Live Open Mic Night. You know, we're just here in the community, and we want the community to know that we are here and that we have some events, and we're not asking for anything other than for you to show up, display your gift, or if you would just like to show up and be a part. You know, we are here with open arms. We're saying community, we love you, and we are not asking for anything, but we're trying to give the community something. So when would there be another portrait uh, that group meet again uh, and have fun, hang out, and, you know, I hear y'all was making a lot of noise. Oh. Was, <laughs> so when will y'all meet again? When would they have? have? We're, <laughs> we'll be meeting this Friday night, actually, and we do hang out. This we do Friday make night. noise. We have a lot of fun. We have poets coming from <laughs> Raleigh. We have local poets um, Pierre Perry, we have Rosalie Holmes, they all produces, have produced poetry books. We have a uh, songstress, Joanna Davis, who produces uh, her very own um, CD. We have a lot of people. We have Thomas Perry, who is an a awesome musician. He comes, he do the sounds, he plays the music. We have food. We just have a good time. <laughs> I mean, just come and be a part of it. It's Friday night at 8 o'clock. Y'all be, be getting it in. But let me, now, I know you're also, Tracy, like I said, you're a busy woman. Uh, I think you're the hardest working woman in the area. <laughs> I, think. I know you're also involved with the, the some domestic violence work, and you're also involved with uh, uh, a barber college. So can you share a little bit about those two, uh, I guess, separate entities that you're involved in again? Certainly, Terrence. The barber college is located in Henderson, North Carolina. The name of it is Jeter Barber College. And I can tell you that I love it. I love it because we get a chance to make a difference in lives. We have so many people to come through this program successfully. We have had five successful graduations where people have went on and obtained their state professional license. And we have a couple of students that have already went into the second realm of entrepreneurship by owning their own establishments. You know, and I just love um, Jeter Barber College because it really makes a difference in your life, even for those people that think that they have been counted out, you may have a felon. You, I mean, come and see us. You never know what, you never know by your visit, come to see us, how your whole life could change. And, you know, you don't just, we just don't teach barbering, but, you know, we teach life's principles. I mean, I love it. I feel like being the director of Judah Barber College, this is what I was born for because I'm not giving people a fish but we teaching them how to fish and how to sustain their own way of living and that is powerful and that is what I love that is purpose that is ministry you whatever name you want to put on it it's powerful and I love it and the domestic violence piece yes that is true I am associated with domestic violence I am a um, intake I do intake for domestic violence and being in that setting making a difference in someone's life that has been abused, being there to be able to counsel with them, to embrace them with a hug and to give them motivation, to let them know that, you know, you're just coming through here, but you're coming through here to gain a power and a strength to go on and live a, a happy life. Come here and get healed and get the resources that you need. Um, we're here. There's a hotline that you can call the um, domestic violence hotline. You never know what advocate you may get, but just know, community, that we're here. We're here to make a difference, and that's what it's all about for me. That's why I was born. That's my purpose. All right. That's powerful. 
And my phone number is 919-939-8329. All right. Anybody that want to call into the show, um, you can call in at 919-518-9773. We have Tracy Butterfly Dunstan today, and she was sharing her book, Divine Influence, which is on Amazon.com. It's on Create Space, and also you can go to Barnes & Nobles and pick up a copy. Uh, but also, can you t- tell us again, Tracy, uh, a little bit about how to get in touch with you through social media, uh, where we can find you at, any event that you have coming up where you will be promoting your book or, or uh, sharing your book with others anytime soon? Social media, again, I'm on Facebook, and you can find me on all these social media sites, and that's Tracy with an I, T-R-A-C-I, and then that's Butterfly with an I, not an L, not a Y, but a Tracy Butterfly Dunson, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn as well, and also I have a YouTube t- channel as well. And also you can find me at Judah Barber College. The number there is 252-430-1633, and we also have a website as well. And I have a website myself with Wix with Wix.com, and that's Tracy Butterfly Dunson again. If you want to find me, just look up Tracy Butterfly Dunson. That's with two eyes, so you can find me real easy. Now, can we go to your website uh, and order your book from your website? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we can do that. Again, Tracy, listen, I appreciate having you on the show, and hopefully you'll, you'll come back again. But also, before we wrap it up, I do want to ask you again, uh, in talking about the, the divine influence, that's just a lot of poems. Uh, and it speaks of a lot of healing. But now I, I want to know, do you tie your books into the work that you're doing, say, at the women's shelter? Um, are they able to read your books? Are you able to share your books with them? Uh, and if you have, had that process helped them to heal? Uh, um, yes, uh, my book is available at the women's shelter. That matter of fact, someone has purchased my book, and it is a book of healing. Um, and even while I'm at the women's shelter, There's always encouragement. My book is who I am. So if I'm speaking, I'm speaking my book. If you're reading my book, then that's me speaking. Uh, I believe that I'm holistic, that I'm one. I'm one with everything. So um, when when you meet me, and if it was five years ago, and when you see me again ten years from that five years, (laughs) you're still going to meet the same person. Even I'm thinking about even as a director of Jeter Barber College, when the students first come in for enrollment and I tell them that I'm the director and I'm their number one cheerleader because it's my job to make sure that they complete this program this program successfully. So that's who I am. No matter what I'm attached to, no matter what I'm connected to, I want to make sure that people succeed in whatever it is that they're putting their energy towards because it's, it's what they desire. So we should have the things that we desire if we put forth the effort to make it happen. So if you need a, to be a cheer, if you need a cheerleader, then that's who I am. You know, I might not can cheer for the um, Redskins. I might not can cheerleader for the Dallas Cowboys, but I can be a life I can be a life coach slash cheerleader for you for anybody that has a goal that they're trying to accomplish because. You know, no man is an island, and we don't live unto ourselves. You know, we are all connected, whether we choose to believe it or not. But listen to me today. We are all connected, and it takes everyone working together to for a better outcome for each and every one of us that exist in this world. Okay. And, Tracy, on that note, I'm going to change the subject just a little bit, but it's, along, it's still along those lines. Uh, before you came in, we were talking about the – the shootings that took place uh, over the weekend at the uh, at the at the club in uh, in uh, Orlando, Florida, and there was about 50 people that were killed in the club, LGBTQ community, uh, but also there were about uh, another 50 that were shot. What were your your thoughts when you heard when you heard about that? And I mean, what's going on with with these mass shootings? But I really don't know what's going on with this mass, these mass shootings other than I, the only thing I could say is that, you know, we need more life coaches. We need more positive people. We need to be able to cause people to evolve into their greater self, which goes back to what I stated earlier, to 
A community will never change unless we as individuals change. And my heart goes out to, you know, the survivors. My heart goes out to the family, but not only to that mass shooting that took place in Florida, but the people that get killed every day, you know. Yeah. Um, there, certainly, there certainly is, you know, a, an issue that needs to be resolved. And these issues need to be resolved within the individual. So there's nothing that we can pin, to my, my thinking, there's nothing that we can really pinpoint as to why these things happen because the, the thought first starts in the individual mind. So we as a people, you know, we need to come together collectively and, you know, and create some type of proactive measures. And it doesn't also, it doesn't always center around more laws, but, it, but community efforts right. reaching humanity. You know, mm-hmm. not be so systematic, but, I mean, we're human. So let's reach the heart and the mind of the people that live here in this earth. And I think that we'll see a, a decrease in, in crime across the board, not just shooting, but crime takes place every day. But it starts in the mind and the hearts of the, the individual. And why people do the things that they do, I don't know. Everybody has a story. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Tracy, before we, we wrap it up, I want to try to get one more question in. And well, it's, it's not necessarily a question, but when we spoke about uh, purpose and collective, you know, uh, humanity collectively, but I have uh, my thoughts of what purpose uh, purpose is all about is your spiritual identity. When it, when, it, when I think of a person's purpose, I'm, I'm thinking of spiritual identity. Uh, and some people look at purpose as, as something different. How does purpose resonate with you? Uh, and do you see it as a, a spiritual identity? Because a lot of times we talk about purpose, we talk about our missions, and we talk about our causes that we fight for. Uh, but a, a lot of people use those in the same, like one in the same. Your, your, your mission and your purpose is the same. I see a mission as something that you choose to take on a mission. And you've taken on about four or five missions right now that you spoke about today. I see those as missions. But you also spoke about purpose. And I see purpose as spiritual identity. So how do you see purpose different from your mission? Uh, and you said that you, you, that you felt like your purpose was, um, I guess, just your, your, the giving of yourself to, yes. to a large extent. Can you speak to that before we, we get ready to close out and just give us a little bit more before we let you go? We try to get all the trace. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Terrence. Purpose to me is just who you are. And you'll never understand your purpose until you understand who you are. And there, you know, we we was born in a family. We were shaped in that family. We took on that family ideas. We took on the community ideas. We took on the school teachers' ideas. We took on the laws. We took on all those things, and those things formed and shaped us. But that may not necessarily be who you really are. So that's why I always point the individual back to themselves on the inside taking time to discover who you are, and then you'll understand your purpose. And your purpose, to me, speaks greater than any mission. Your purpose is the thing that you will do for free. That purpose is the thing that keeps you um, moving. It. When, even when you feel like giving up, even when you want to throw in a towel, even when it's hard, because fulfilling your purpose is not hard. Fulfilling destiny is not not, I'm sorry, it's not easy, but you have to keep on. And that purpose on the inside of you is your motivator. It, it, it'll push you. It'll, it'll pull you. It'll wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> purpose speaks. I mean, it speaks really loud when you understand it. You know, that find, that may become times you find yourself like, man, this is just too hard for me. But purpose, purpose, of you know, it'll, it'll just give you what you need. So the thing that keeps driving you, Understand that that's probably your purpose. And you can know the difference between purpose and a mission because, you know, a mission could be for six months, could be for a year, could be for five years. You know, we did that. We completed that. It was successful. And then we move on to the next mission. But your purpose, it'll be a life-driven aspiration. All right. Tracy, listen, we appreciate having you on today. That was more than most informative, but it was, a, I don't know, I just had a spiritual lesson here today. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling real spiritual right now. And 
and from reading your, your poems to just listening that you talk today and the things that, that you are doing and the things that you've shared with us, uh, it is uplifting. And I think if more people got involved uh, in some of the things that, that you've shared with us today, uh, because you look at how you can help and serve, and I think the more that we do help and serve, then the more that we take, I guess we take humanity to the next level. But like you said, it starts with the individual and the individual looking at their missions and their purpose and doing what, you know, what they're called to do. A lot of people don't connect to that. And, I, and I'm saying I think a lot of us are disconnected and we need to get connected to our inner selves and do more inner work uh, from, the, from the inside. And I think that, that may start with, uh, it start with spiritual te uh, teachings. And I think if the families, the parents, and and, and uh, the community have more spiritual teachings, then they can impart that to the younger generation, and then they'll be born into that. But it's disconnect. And I think with the disconnect, then that lets anything in that's, ne that's not necessarily of mankind. Uh, it could be, it's, you know, it'd be coming in from all directions. We yes. got crazy mass shootings. We got um, intimate partner homicide, we got black on black crime, white on white crime, I mean just all sorts of crimes all over the world, but I think it's, it's just that disconnect with with the, the spiritual man, and like you said earlier you know, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, and we have to get back to that spirituality of humanity, uh, and that comes back to love Yes, uh, I think love conquers all and love heals all, uh, and that, on that note Again, I want to say this is Rebels with a Purpose, and we're on every Tuesday afternoon at 2 till 3. Uh, Tracy, again, I appreciate you for coming on. Is there anything else you want to share with, with the public about how to get in touch with you uh, and where you'll be, any events that you got going on coming up anytime soon? Thank you for having me, Terrence. And again, we will have our poetry live this Friday night beginning at 8 p.m., 106 Chester Street, Lewisburg, North Carolina. And the thing that I would like to leave is that love causes everything to grow. So if you want increase in your life, continue to evolve and give love, and you, your whole life will change for the better. All right, I appreciate you guests for listening in this evening, and I want to thank again our special guest today, Tracy Dunstan, and also earlier we had Frank Jordan, uh, two powerful guests that came in this, this afternoon. Uh, thanks. We'll be on again next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. I want to leave you with live, love, laugh, uh, and enjoy. You only have so many tomorrows, so enjoy today. Thanks. Take care. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Current Affairs with Omnon Nissan, and if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section on NissanCommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.